How are you guys doing today? It's Anthony Ganji. Welcome to another episode of Tear Talk. Guys, great, great show today. I have a friend of mine named Brian Daw. He's the national director for One Voice. One Voice is a movement, I would say. It really is a movement to bring us together, frontline, all departments, and even involves uh, inmates as well to go ahead and promote positive change that really does help us move forward in corrections. It's a One Voice initiative. And guys, right now, the concern that we have in corrections is that we are divided. We have animosity amongst ourselves. It's like this us versus them mentality that just stags, stagnates us. You know, especially when we have generalized animosity towards, let's say, admin, and maybe generalized animosity towards even the inmate population, when at the end of the day, we are moving forward. We are going to create changes, and our best efforts are not going to come from a divided system, but rather a system that works together. And having said that, Brian Daw wrote this tremendous article. It's about leadership and reform. Do we have what it takes? And the article hit home to me because it, it talks about the divide between frontline and admin and how it's, it's, it's not really – a divide based on position, but rather it's something higher. It's a systematic concern that we all could be dress, addressing at a higher level. And this article, it's an elevated perspective from a retired frontline professional. There's courage in this article. There's courage in this perspective that's coming from Brian Daw. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something. The courage hit home with me. The moment I read it to the point where I begged Brian today, you got to read this article. This isn't going to be an interview. This is going to be Brian reading this article word for word. And you'll understand by just the article itself why it hit home with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to forward the show over to Brian. He's going to introduce himself, talk about the One Voice Initiative for a second. Then he's going to talk about why he put this article together, why it's needed, and then he's going to read the article. Guys, I really do hope you pay attention to the message of this article, because if ever we're going to create positive change, the change doesn't come from a divided system. It comes from us working together, all levels, all departments. You know, this is truly an article that I believe is pioneering something beautiful and great, and hopefully you guys see what I see. So... Brian, I, I know you were busy today. Uh, thank you for doing this at the last minute. Again, I'm not lying to you. This article just meant something to me. I felt that it couldn't wait. I mean, that's how important it is. I felt like it had to get out now. And thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to, you know, help me put this message out there. But enough of me, Brian. Uh, there you go, man. Thank you, Anthony. It's always good to be on your show. And I appreciate the opportunity to share this with you and uh, with your listeners. Um, One Voice United is exactly what you say. It is a group of correctional officers, correctional professionals from all across the country who have, are pretty much tired of, of being left out of this, this discussion of all the changes that are taking place within our profession across the country. And it's time to listen and make sure that we have the voices of the men and women who are on the front line every day and, and that we have their backs and that we're making sure that they have a voice and a place where they can be heard. And one of the things that one of the initiatives among many of the things that we are involved with at One Voice is a look at, at leadership and a look at reform. And as we all know in this business, whether we like it or not, reform is coming and it always has. And, you know, the pendulum swings to the hard, hard one way and to the left the other way. And uh, we have to live within those changes. Uh, and for years and years, I've looked at this in, in the wrong light. And, and one of the reasons I wrote this article is because it's come pretty much the revelation to me that, as you stated earlier, this is a systemic problem. This is not a, an us versus them problem. Yet that's what we're trained and that's what we're told. And that's how we think from day one when it comes to corrections. From every movie you've ever seen, for the most part, from the time I was a little guy uh, through now, uh, when we look at these situations, we're always portrayed in an us versus them, whether it's us versus the inmates, the inmates versus us, us versus management, management versus us. It's, it, it's always an us and them scenario, and it doesn't have to be that way. And it can't be that way. Because we've learned and we should have learned from over 200 years of this experience now that it doesn't work in this manner. And so we have to change the way we look at leadership and we have to change the way we look at reform. In fact, we have to embrace both. 
And so I wrote this article. It appears in New Jersey Cop Magazine, and I'm very appreciative to them for allowing me a voice and for allowing our professional voice in their magazine. And with that, I'll read the article to you. Excuse me just one second. The article is entitled Leadership and Reform. Do we have what it takes? Not everyone is meant to lead, nor do most people want the responsibility that comes with leadership. Being a leader means living by a certain standard and that the words and actions you take are true and consistent. Being a leader also means that when you're wrong, you admit it and you make the appropriate adjustments. I must admit it's taken me a long time to realize that I've been wrong in believing that individual managers and administrators are to blame for the unhealthy state of affairs in corrections today. For decades, I've been fighting the wrong fight. I failed to realize that it's not the individuals, it's the system. It's not an evil superintendent or an ignorant freeholder or that captain, lieutenant, or sergeant who used to, <coughs> excuse me, who took a promotion and has gone from being viewed as a solid fellow CO to an asshole in a few months. They are performing and responding as the system was designed. Whether you measure, measure success by recidivism rates, officer retention, assault statistics, or the mental health of staff and those incarcerated, by nearly any metric you select, the system has failed. Why is this the case? Because all of us, from the newest Greenhorn CO to the first time offender, to the head of almost every correctional agency in the nation, has been fed a lie. And we've bought it. We've bought into the us versus them ideology. Whether it's officers dealing with inmates, administrators dealing with officers, any of us dealing with the media, inmates interaction with staff, or prison gang versus prison gang. We have been taught that in corrections, those interactions are almost always based on an us against them footing. It's wrong. It doesn't have to be that way. I'm no hug a thug and anybody who's ever worked with me and knows me know that's the case. And I'm not a card carrying member of the ACLU. But it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that the current situation, no matter which side of the table you sit on, it's not working. So what do we do? Do we throw up our hands in disgust and give in? With 156 officer suicides a year and a 34% PTSD PTSI rate, accepting things the way they are is not an option. Clearly, the system is not working. It's time to embrace that word that makes us all cringe, reform. Whenever a CO hears reform, and I've been hearing that word for 40 years now, it usually means that our jobs are going to get tougher. That dynamic must change. We must be involved in any reform movement. In fact, we should lead it. It's time to be leaders and admit the job is not getting done. We have to gather all the stakeholders together, administrators, unions, officers, staff, politicians, the inmates and their advocates alike, and stop this insanity. The system is literally killing us and not doing those in custody much good either. When we talk about reform, we need to be mindful that to move forward, we must first identify those issues where there is common ground. We all know areas where we won't agree, but can we find those where we might? I believe we can, and we must. Number one is safety, not just the public's and ours, but the inmates as well. And that comes down to staffing. Inmate advocates agree with our position that in order to provide a safe environment, minimum staffing levels must be determined and maintained. High priorities on the firmers' lists are rehabilitation and programming. Would you be surprised to learn that officers agree? Unlike our portrayal in the media, a survey of officers across the nation revealed that more than 80% believe re rehabilitation is a worthy goal. 86% believe in drug and alcohol programming. 82% support educational programs and 77% believe in vocational training. Those numbers show overwhelming support for rehabilitation efforts. However, support disappears if it's at the expense of staff safety. If a unit that runs with two officers is reduced to one, so the other officer can be reassigned to oversee an MA program, then there is little support for programming. Rehabilitation efforts cannot come at the expense of safety. What about training? That's always an issue for us. Many times the required annual OJT never happens, or if it does, it's outdated and not related to reality behind the walls. Training is an area where, once again, all parties can agree. Here's an example. We all benefit, staff and inmates alike, from emotional intelligence training. That's the art of de-escalation and controlling your emotions in stressful situations. None of us wants to live or work in a violent environment. We realize it's unavoidable in many instances behind the walls. But if we can reduce and mitigate those, mitigate those instances, 
Aren't we better off? Two other areas of agreement are the need for mental health facilities designed specifically for that population with the staff trained as such. An idea virtually no one disagrees with. And the end of the Dungeons for Dollars privacy industry as well. Those are five issues on which to start a reform conversation. Minimum staffing levels, enhanced training, rehabilitation, mental health facilities, and ending privatization. All stakeholders have a vested interest in every one of those issues. If we can begin with honest, open discussion on those five, we just might start the long road to true reform. Thanks, Andy. That's the, uh, Anthony, that's the article. I can't hear you, my friend. It's just, it's a very powerful article. I just want people to know, like right now, guys, I don't want to use the word change anymore because it's really evolution. I know a lot of people may be uh, afraid of the word change, but evolution actually is a way to move forward. You know, it, it's basically re remembering our roots and, and where do we go from here? And for those that may be resistant to this word now, evolution, be, be advised, guys, we only evolve when we stay true to our core values. There's nothing about our core values that change with our effort to move forward. Actually, it's reinforced. Our core values are reinforced by everything that Brian just stated. Everything that Brian just stated is based on our core values. Basically, we are a family and how do we take care of each other so we can go ahead and be more effective? And let's be honest, our job is to be more effective with those that we that are in our custody. So having said that, everything that Brian says hits true. And I just want to add one more thing. As a system, we do have to come together. But right now, the system seems to be divisive. Guys, we will not ever have anything positive come our way in isolation. Because in the end, all we wind up doing is what's best for ourselves on a very selfish and, and, and unfortunately affects us on a very minute level. Clearly, Anthony, what's going on so far isn't working. And we have to take the reins of reform in our hands. We have to unite throughout our ranks. And we have to understand that we need a systemic change. The pointing of fingers is useless. It's not getting us anywhere. It never has. We've been pitted against one another since time started in the way the system has been designed. The system is flawed. We have to realize that from the onset if we're going to make the change that needs to be made. Can we make them? Yeah, I think we can. If we have enough like-minded individuals that are willing to sit down, leave their egos outside the door, and understand this isn't some big macho challenge. This is about getting through a day. This is about helping people. This is about keeping people safe. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And we need to take a different direction in the way in which we do that. Yeah, there's certain people that should be in jail and should always be there. We know those folks. And they belong to be there, and they are where they are. But there's also other things that we can do and work within the system to lessen some of the problems we have. Hey, here's a great idea. What about single bunking? You think there's anybody in our system that doesn't like the idea of single bunking? All of us do, whether you're a staff member or you're an inmate. You want single bunking. Why don't we go to that position? We have a lot of facilities now where they're downsizing because they're lowering the number of inmates we have. Let's not lower staff. Let's take the opportunity. Let's use single bunking. Let's keep our staffing levels the same so we can have the programming that's necessary to get these people out and keep them out. You know, these are things that we agree with. Meals are another thing that we agree with. No one, you know, they shouldn't get filet mignon, but they shouldn't eat uh, uh, um, Chef Boy ID every day either. You know, there are certain things that we can come to terms with and agree with to move things forward. And there are things we'll never agree with. We'll never agree with getting rid of segregation. I mean, that is a tool we must have. Can we agree that certain stimulations, certain stipulations should be applied and that uh, we should closely monitor any abuse of that? Yes, but should we get rid of it? Absolutely not. That's a tool we must have for protection of not only ourselves, but the inmates who are incarcerated there. But there are things we can absolutely agree on and move forward. And if you look at who gets things done, when you can get groups that sit on the opposite side of the table to come together on issues, you know who listens? Everybody. And that's what we need to do. We need to get our hands together, lock our minds in a room, and start working on these problems and moving forward. And that's what One Voice is about, is bringing these parties together to make sure that the voices of correctional officers are heard in this discussion on reform. Because it is them, the men and women who are gonna do this every day that are gonna make it or break it. And we need to get together and work on these solutions as a team. And what's and great about this, Brian, seriously. is that you can't make effective change that's gonna be effective to the MA population without looking at it through the eyes of the frontline professionals who have to implement it. Okay. So having said that, for the frontline uh, professionals that are involved in this, 
This is you helping us commit to something and not be the obstacle. No, we, we need to move forward. We need to embrace, like I said, we don't, not, we don't want to be the, the, um, the end result of reform. We want to lead the charge. No one knows what needs to be done better than the men and women who do this job every day. But what's happened, Tony, is no one's asked us. And so now we're stepping up as one voice and uniting unions and offices all across the country to address these issues as a united group of concerned citizens as well as law enforcement professionals. And that's the approach we have to take. And all of us are in this together and involved in this together. The stakeholders are broad. You know, there's 400,000 officers that work. Think of all the inmates and their families and our families and all of those people involved in this system that's been a miserable failure. We need to understand that, address it, be willing to face it as leaders and take the challenges head on and look for the true solutions. And guys, this movement includes all departments. It includes the program providers, medical, mental health. It includes maintenance, food Probation, service. If, you, if you're touched by the system of incarceration, then this is something you need to be involved in and aware of. And get your voice heard. Thanks, Brian. Hey, Brian, uh, I appreciate your time and effort. I'm going to get this posted up immediately. I just wanted to get the message out there. A message like this cannot be delayed. It cannot okay, be I appreciate delayed. it. So as appreciate always, it. Brian, thanks for coming on, and I'll see you next week. We'll have you on again, and we'll discuss a couple of things that uh, you're doing for Well, we got to really discuss the video and stuff we've done, and Stephen Walker from California and the great uh, the, the bearing of his soul he's done for the whole profession. It's something everyone has to see. And guys, I did share that video on my community board. If you go to the chance, uh, go to the community board, you'll see a video that they did. It it, it kind of hits to the heart of being a correctional officer. A uh, very, very emotional story from a hero who lost both his uh, his father and his son. Uh, and uh, if you guys aren't moved by that, uh, you don't have to be in this profession to be moved by that. This is just a story that's told by a hero who uh, uh, it allows himself to express vulnerability so it opens up the door for us to do the same great video great concept and basically it's okay to admit you're not okay and we'll explore that concept next week as always guys the show is tear talk please subscribe interact engage comment hit that bell bell's gonna notify you every time i post a video stay safe Whoa.